These are the newest styles of side entry tents and galley kitchen enclosures on the market. Small campers are a great investment, but as you and I both know, they can often be a bit limiting in size. Adding an annex room, also known as a side entry tent, is the best way to quickly expand your living space into what we call your outdoor living room. I'm going to move quickly through these tents and awnings so we can pack a bunch of outdoor living options for you into this video. As usual, links to these tents and awnings can be found within the video description below. I like this when they have the simple instructions just attached inside the bag. What we have here is a really quick setup because you have two poles exiting across the center. No pushing it through sleeves that takes time and needing another person. There's a third pole here that goes underneath. And so on a windy day, you've kind of created this wind catch. So the next step is taking these poles and setting up this back end. But why I picked up this Hasika and I really like it, it's larger than the other brands. And so if I'm in a hurry, I don't even need these poles. As you guys know, I'm five foot 11. Let's say you put this over your teardrop. This is going to fit over any hatch of a teardrop. It's going to fit over any side entry door of your teardrop. I don't have a teardrop today, so I'm using a vehicle as an example. These come with a suction cup attached, and this is supposed to be the last point of contact after you tie down all the guy lines. But for me, I like to do this first because it gives me an extra set of hands. So if that wind is blowing through, I just suck this down and I can walk around and start tying off the guy lines. I'm throwing this on top of my roof box just to give you an idea to simulate basically a high off-road trailer, what that would look like underneath. Something like the new Escapod, the Topo 2. You're gonna get a ton of space under there. I'll put this pole up to give you an idea. Look at all this space. But when you raise things this high, now let's say you're in the Midwest and you have a sideways blowing rain. So as you can see, this came down quite a lot. My head is over it. It's giving me more protection from that sideways blowing wind. But inside here, I still have seven and a half feet, eight feet of headroom throughout this entire tent. Now, if it was me, I think I still wouldn't use these. It's just cumbersome. I dropped this to the ground. I have plenty of space. I'll show you that. I can come up here, cook in the galley, do my stuff. I have all this space. And that's the difference between the Hasika and some of the other brands. I'll show you and other brands on the market. It's a bit wider, I believe, but I know for sure it's longer. And so that length is really getting me a lot of room to play here. One more thing to note, this comes up. You've probably experienced this already. When you put an awning over your galley, you tend to have stagnant air. So now you not only have a cross breeze, you also have air coming through this way as well. Also, they have the little gear holder that mounts. I use this to hold my lights. So if your galley doesn't have good lights or lighting over your table out there, your chairs, you just plug it in up there and you're good to go. La duta. Another one of my favorites, directions inside the bag. I have to say these SUV style tents that we're using for small camper trailers, they're so quick to set up because when you pull them out, you're just looking for the elastic side and you know that's what's going to end up at the foot of your trailer. And just like that other tent, I like to take things like this and just kind of secure it quickly so you can start working other parts of the tent. We've got your basic shock cord here. And then this is just a one piece pole design. That's really it. So I like this one because it's just simple like many tents you're probably familiar with. So you've got one of these on each side to get that cross breeze. What was nice about this tent compared to the one I showed you earlier is it has this tension strap between the two sides where the poles get up. And so this makes the setup much easier and much more secure. In terms of height, it's about seven foot, I would say, throughout. And it's really going to depend on where the height of your galley is. So if you have a lower galley like I'm simulating here, you would just put some sort of pole to give you a teepee effect. And you're getting seven foot all the way up to your cooking area and all the way back here. This is a large space. 
Now, I think this would be a great side entry tent, great bathroom tent here is what I'm seeing. Now we discussed full weather protection with this tent, but what if you want to expand the space and create more of an open feeling? You can easily do this by raising the doors up and extend the space out by converting it into an awning. I really like the options this tent provides. And if you think the capabilities of this tent couldn't expand anymore, later in this video I'll show you an add-on to this tent that makes it fully functioning in this last open, airy configuration, but with the benefits of keeping those bugs out. This one is small but mighty. Red Camp. Tiny instructions. All right, we've got more shot cord. Lots of it. Just like the others, we have a strap. We can run it through our rim. What do you think? Wow, I absolutely love this one. So as you saw on the first one, we had issues with sideways rain. This takes away all those issues, but still gives you plenty of coverage. And by plenty, let's take a look inside. So let's just start at the perimeter here. We're talking seven feet. When you get in here to the center at the highest point, my hand holding up is usually about seven and a half feet. A little jump of six inches, probably eight feet at the peak. Look how wide this is. So imagine tables and chairs here. It grows compared to the first one wider because of how far it slants out. And then from the back to the front, look how much space I have. One more thing to note, obviously these are not just for galleys. This can go over your door. So this could be a side entry tent. Imagine all the space it can give you. It can be a great way to connect to your rear tent if you have one. I think for the size of it and for what it does, this one's gonna be hard to beat, but let's see what we have next. I bet you know this one. Well, sort of anyways, why is it so big? Are you ready for the magic? <laughs> All summer this set up like instantly and today it took me almost two minutes. But my worry is always these bags. So if you've had one of these quick pop-up showers, once the bag goes and rips like this and starts, or the zippers go, once you fold this down, it's kind of unruly when you can't put it in a bag. And then this side, just like the others, is going to attach to your teardrop. As gimmicky as this is, you're going to be surprised by the features of all the awnings we've used so far this has the best features in many ways. So for one, the elastic here fits tighter than all the other tents. In terms of keeping bugs out, this is a very secure fit, more straps. Next, you have the doors. On most side entry tents, on all the instant pop-ups you hear us talk about on the channel, you have one door, two at most. And we're always talking about the need for more doors. This has three doors on the outside, plus a door into your galley or the side entry. So essentially four doors. Once you zip this up, what was once your protection from rain and wind can now become an awning if you put the awning poles in. And these awnings can be in three different locations covering your gear. Underneath the awning, these all zip down and you have full access to the entryway here. Now there is a bit of ducking to go in. So I'm hitting about this high, slight duck to get in. I'm kicking myself for not bringing these crossbars, but you have two diagonal crossbars. I've been playing with too many of these tents over the summer, they're all getting mixed up. And these crossbars are going to give it height, obviously, and then some rigidity for the wind and keeping the structure a bit more sound. So to give you an idea of size, it's a square. You can see I can walk across it pretty quick. So this is a lot smaller than the other ones, but still big enough for a table, probably three chairs. But with the poles up, we're talking seven feet at least, seven and a half feet in the middle. And then again, probably six, almost seven feet here. Now I haven't used this in high winds. If any of you in the community have had experience with this, let us know, we'd all appreciate it. But kind of neat, I don't know if it's gimmicky, I don't know if it's right, we haven't used it enough, but I'm definitely going to try it more next year. So here's why I love instructions inside of the bags, because you don't lose them, right? 
I lost the instructions. I wanted to show you this. Without the instructions, this thing takes me forever to tear down. With the instructions, I can put it away literally one minute. It is really fast. It tells you which side to fold over to which edge, and then it all kind of rolls up. I can put this away much quicker than I can put away my privacy shower. This is the one a lot of you have been asking about. This is the gabled tarp from Nature Hike. As you may know, we lived full time in our camper for almost three months this year. It's been in the back of our videos. Basically just tarp, guy lines and stakes, but it's the unique shape of the tarp that I think makes this one pretty interesting. As you're now pretty aware, you know I love instructions inside the bag. One requirement for gear that I take into the field is that it has to be able to be set up with me, just one person. If it requires two, it's not coming out with me. And so that was a bit of my reservation with a tarp this large. I feared that I wouldn't be able to do it myself. So I'll show you the little trick I use. So it's very simple what I do. All I do is I put in what I call dummy stakes. So I put them in a centimeter, just enough to give me tension as I pull the tarp across the opposite direction. So on this tarp, it's just three poles. These two main ones that would go over your galley or your side entry. Then I dummy in a couple at the end and then I'll bring a pole and rise up this back section, which they call the tail. Once I pull out the guy lines, everything firms up. The rain's going to fall off this well, but I want to show you under this tarp. This tarp is ginormous. So over your galley, um, probably seven feet tall. If you stay at the ridge line, I can walk all the way back to the pole. The pole's probably six foot six, maybe. Think of how many tables, chairs, people I can put in here. The length of this is just incredible. And I have another way to even get a bit more height out of this and more room. And what I do, if you see the pictures, Nature Hike intended these, the tails to come down, but I add an attachment of guy line on there and extend it out further into camp. And what that does is it picks these tails up off the ground and gives you a lot more height and a lot more width. Now in high wind situations, going straight down to the ground closer, it does hold up better, but I still find even putting this together the way it's designed to be, if you use the stakes that come with this, which are nice stakes, they're still not strong enough with this much material, basically a giant uh, parachute, to keep it held down during a high wind. So it's never left camp, it's always there, but it kind of collapses. I would up your ante on ground stakes. If you haven't seen our video with Pat walking through his ground stakes, I'll put a link in the description. It's the 13 remarkable camping gadgets that you may have never seen. But other than that, I got one hole in this tarp over the summer. We've used this three months straight. I mean, it never was down, except for to change camping sites. The color has changed a little bit. Other than that though, it's held up pretty well. Packs small, sets up fairly quick, and just gives us a ton more space for our outdoor living room. And speaking of stakes, let me go grab you the newest thing I have. How many of you are having issues pulling out ground stakes and bending out every ground stake puller you own or just hurting your fingers or whatever? I have a great suggestion for you. All right, maybe I shouldn't be so confident about this because I've only had it a month, but it is a Gerber product and everything I've had from them has been great. This is called the Stakeout. And what it is, it literally pulls stakes out of the ground. That's what I bought it for, but it's a camping multi-tool. So I'll put a link in the description below. As I'm pulling out these stakes and I got these guy lines here, I have a question for you. So what do you do with your guy lines to not get them to tangle when you pack them. I've individually rolled them, I've put them in groups, I've wrapped them. So let me know, I know it's not only gonna help me, it'll probably help a lot of others on here. And I know there's folks who swear by taking their guy lines off every time. I'm not gonna do that. So if you put that in the comment section, I'm not doing that. There's gotta be a way we can leave them attached, put them away, and they come out in one piece. Why are van lifers, overlanders, everyone spending three times as much for this moon awning? Is it the cool carrying case? Is it the lifetime warranty? Is it the sack that actually doesn't rip and is big enough to not only fit the canopy, but additional accessories? Or is it what's actually inside this bag? Let's find out. 
before I even set this up, look at these poles. They're not only lightweight and adjustable by height, but they're beefy, they are thick. Then you have this material. If you can hear this, this is nothing like the other tents. This is a thick material, almost like the bag of a clam tent. And you can see here, they're using material on the underside to stop that sun coming through, and it's ripstop. But is higher end material and components enough to make this worth three times the price? Let's put it up and see what it's actually like in use. So they're nailing it on every front. Where's the instructions? First thing I noticed when I opened this up, this is much smaller than the canopies I showed you. And that's why I picked those canopies because they're larger than a moon. But maybe there's some sort of added functionality with this small size. So this is a little different. I have to mount a strut pole is what they're calling it if my attachment point is less than seven feet wide. And so for all of us with teardrop campers, nobody's going to have a seven foot wide camper for the galley. You also may have noticed what's different about this is that you set it up or attach it to the vehicle before putting the cross members. Another neat feature, this has almost like a leather or a faux leather, so it's never going to rip through there. And then you just stretch it across. And these bend so much because they're aluminum, so there's no struggling putting it in like I found with some of the other canopies where I really had to work it in there. So if you have arthritis or limited use of your hands, this is going to be a much better option. And typically the second pole would be the tough one to bend. Not tough at all, goes right in here. Clip this. Now here's a benefit, right before I mention a con. Already before the guy lines are up and the poles are in to support it, it has very good rigidity. It's not touching the edge of the vehicle, which is nice. You know, it's holding up in this wind right now. But look at this setting down. Remember I mentioned that this is smaller? So this vehicle would be a little lower almost than a standard teardrop right now, because I have this down. And if you were to put this to the ground, which I can't do because of the wind right now, but it's very tight. I'm hitting my head. Yes, it would do the job, but this does require the poles out there to stand up because of its limited size. So like I mentioned, this has a lot of benefits. One of them, because of its rigidity, I can just stick the poles up here and it can hold itself before I am ready with the guy line, which typically I can't do. I'm like kind of holding it, doing that dummy stake like I mentioned before. Even in the wind here, I can let this be. And then it has these clips here that I'll show you that secure these poles to the awning so when it tips over, they're not going to fall out. Down here, we can adjust the height of these poles. So there's a line in here, right here. And that helps you when this disappears to bring it back to know where alignment is so you can get it nice and seated in there. You have your carabiner here for hanging a light. You can really pull down on this. You can feel the strength of this and then some other hooks, four of them around the tarp. And then last, we'd need to tie it down. They give you high quality metal stakes here and then high quality guy lines with metal adjustments. Now, obviously you don't wanna do what I did here and raise it up. You want to drop these poles down so the water doesn't run into the galley. Another thing you can do, this whole thing can move and be a side entry. So it can either come off your door lengthwise or you can have it sideways like this and run it out to get more width. You guys see this thing coming in? I'd like to say it was from eating well this summer, but I think it was a bit of inactivity for me. Of all the tents today, this will be the biggest you will see. The instructions for this just come on paper in the bag. Some sliding through here, which I'm never a fan of, but there's only one pocket, so this is very simple. So I don't know if you can hear the sound of this material. It's hard to explain, but every camp tent, awning, annex we've used, they have thin, cheap material. This is some thick, um, I don't know what it's made of, but I can tell it's going to last a lot longer. As you can see here, there's a bit of play, and that's the beauty of this. This is really wide, so it's designed to suck up tight against your trailer, your vehicle, to keep the bugs out. But if you had a wider vehicle, you could pull this all the way out here, or you just wanted more airflow or whatever, 
One more bit of added security here for bugs is this little flap. Of all the tents I purchased for this review video, this was the one, this configuration actually was the one I was most excited about. And it does work, but the other configurations, not so much, and I'll explain that in a bit. But this one, you have this open awning, which allows you easy access to your galley kitchen for prepping, moving things through the pass-through, things like that. In the back here, this can come down, have complete weather cover, or it be open with bug netting like this to let the air through. So I showed you the nice thick canvas, but yet they put extra time, extra money into having that nice and they skimped on the zippers. No YKK zippers. This means they're sticking on the way down. They're probably going to break under tension. And unlike most tents, if there's some sort of tension and you can't get those zippers down, you're going to bring in the edges of that tent and it will slide easy. But what happens on this, if you're not on even ground, if you bring that in, now all of a sudden you're changing the tension back here and this is going to fall or some other part will sag or get too tight. If I get this part right, then that door won't open. But, and there's always a but here, one thing I do to you and I need to get better at with this channel is I tend to put my camping style upon you, like that's your camping style. If you camp in paid campgrounds, places where they are level and ready for you, a majority of those sites are level. You don't just have to have one configuration only like me. You can bring these walls down and make it bug proof because it's level enough to have it staked properly. Now this tent has some great features. It has these edges around it that swing out to stop the bugs from coming in. And then it comes with this. This is basically a skirting that goes around the bottom of your trailer and it's going to wrap around and attach to the vehicle or the tent and it stops those bugs from coming out or snakes or whatever you're afraid of from coming out from underneath your vehicle. And one more thing I really want to note, my roof rack is getting in the way of this being pushed back. So if you have a more standard, smaller four by eight or five by 10 trailer without a roof rack or maybe a low profile roof rack, this may, if you try this, be able to go back far enough that this actually comes out over one of your door openings. And so what that would mean is when you get out of your teardrop, if you stake this right, you could come out in the rain from one of your doors, walk out here under this tarp right into your tent and never get wet. So I think this might be a solution for some of you for a one tent setup that does both the galley and the side entry. I don't know any other tents that could do that. So this is another one from La Duta, if I'm pronouncing that right. And this one is more about keeping the mosquitoes out. So it goes on more like a sleeve. This was very easy to do with May. With one person, you gotta wrap it a little bit. Kind of looks like an ARB awning, doesn't it? I like how it's all mesh. I like that it allows you to stay away from the bugs but feel like you're outside. I'm not sure how to actually put this one up. So when it came, it had no instructions. It's good, you know, just like many of the others, kind of a cheap zipper. It's gonna be good for light duty, but I don't know how long this will hold up. It is not six feet tall unless you put up some sort of poles. I have these poles. I thought it came with this, but I never could figure out where they go. And maybe it came with a different tent. But here is where this tent gets interesting. Although it can be purchased as a standalone bug shelter, this tent was designed to fit inside the first Laduda tent I showed you. Now you'll have all the benefits of that first tent in terms of space and use of the awning, but you also will now have protection from those bugs. Unlike the other ones that were designed for an SUV a hatchback here, there are no tie-offs here. So if you got this, you'd have to make some sort of attachment point to keep this nice and tight. Due to this video going long, I'm going to hit the next three tents really fast. I talk a lot about clam tents, and as you know, I think they do everything well minus one thing. And that one thing is the fact that they only have one door. Check out the gazelle tents. These are also instant pop-ups, some with wind panels and even a canopy for the front door, but many of the gazelle tent models have what the clam does not offer, a second door. Next, if you're on a budget, we have an entire video dedicated to what we used to feel was the best budget all around side entry tent. Link in the description below. I'd be interested to see how you think it compares to some of the tents we showed in this video. And then we have a new addition into our camping arsenal. Our family just purchased the new Julka triple ensuite. Basically, we have an instant pop-up with three tents in one, a shower room, toilet room, and a small communal space for changing or hanging out in inclement weather. 
we'll be extensively putting this tent to the test the next three to six months. We have a number of other side entry tents we have highlighted in the past. Check out these two videos on the left side of the screen to see more options or click our playlist on the right to see all the gear we use to camp and have a more comfortable and gratifying camping experience. As usual, stay safe on the road and we will see you in the next episode.